Hey guys, it's Carly bringing you day 14 of my 31 days of horror. First off, I want to say sorry if you can hear any background noise like thumping or things like that. It's because I started washing clothes and I wasn't thinking because I wanted to do this video, but then I put clothes in the wash and I forgot that that is very noisy. So that is my bad. I am dumb. But anyway, we are on day 14 and today I'm going to be doing Wrong Turn 5 Bloodlines. I have not seen all of the Wrong Turn films. I've seen part 1 and part 2, which I really enjoy. Um, I like part 1 a little better than part 2. I know some people like part 2 a little better and it goes back and forth, but I never got around to watching the rest of the franchise. I think they're up to 6 movies now. They might be going on to 7. I'm not totally sure, but obviously this is part 5, so I have skipped around and I think there is some continuity from this one and the part four, so I probably should have watched the whole franchise to do this, but I figured this one's actually set on Halloween, so we're going to cheat once again and skip around to sequels, but, you know, once again, my bad. I'll get around to the rest of the franchise sooner or later because they are fun movies, but, um, so anyway, the plot here is basically a group of, I guess, uh, 20 year olds or so, teenagers, 20, I think they're like probably in their 20s, they are going to the Mountain Man Music Festival, or I'm not sure, I think it's a music festival, yeah, um, and it is in celebration of Halloween, so it's like a road trip they are taking, they are camping out in the woods, and then they're driving down there when suddenly one of the inbred hillbilly cannibals steps out in the middle of the road, causes them to wreck their vehicle and when they get out to see if he's okay he basically tries to attack them and they attack back in self-defense the sheriff comes along sees what's happening and arrests all of them so they're all in this predicament together along with the cannibal guy and basically the film just takes place in this small little like jail in the town and um, the brothers of this hillbilly dude are trying to get him out and they're seeking revenge because he's obviously in jail and they're basically uh, killing off the kids one by one, stuff like that. So that's basically how the entire movie plays out. Um, and it's actually got Doug Bradley in it. He's one of those people that I don't really recognize right away like I can look at him and say like oh that kind of looks like him I can't tell because when he's not dressed like pinhead he just looks like any common older dude on the streets but so that's pretty cool um his character is pretty like sinister very mean and things like that very cold-hearted uh I will say this movie like I kind of was in and out of it like it was one where for some reason I just kept like looking at my phone I don't know if I wasn't in the mood for it or if it's just how the movie is like this movie's very, you know, basic, like, there's not, it's no masterpiece, obviously it's part five in a franchise that's, like, not a bad franchise, but kind of just, like, your basic franchise, just fun cannibal movies, um, not much to them, so you can't really expect too much out of it. I thought the acting was decent, some of it was kind of okay, kind of cheesy, things like that. Um, I thought the sheriff did a good job. Doug Bradley did a good job. Some of the kids were kind of A, but, um, and, uh, the hillbilly people look pretty decent still. Um, they still look how they did in, like, part one and two, if my memory serves me correct. It's been a while since I've seen those first two, so I think the makeup effects and stuff still kind of pulled up for it, but, uh, yeah, like, like I said, like, I was kind of in and out with this movie. Like, it didn't have my attention fully through the whole movie. It's a very basic movie, really. It's just a typical, they're stuck in this jail waiting for help because the people kind of killed the power and they're making their lives miserable and it's just helplessness. Like, they put up, like, road traps, like, nails on the road, so when they try to drive away, like, you know, they can't get out of the town because these people are basically just trying to kill them and ruin their lives and things like that so the whole movie kind of takes place in this jail for the most part and you know it's not really that Halloween-ish it's just the only Halloween aspects really are that there's like a Halloween festival 
going on they're trying to attend but like I said they're stuck in this place so you don't really get that vibe too much with it but I will say like the kills in it are kind of brutal like and the ending is actually really kind of dark like depressing it does not have a happy ending and I was kind of shocked by that like I think the first one ends good if I remember I can't remember how part two ended and I don't really know how the endings go for the rest of them, if, like, the bad guys always win, or if other people win, or anything like that, but I will say this one's got a depressing ending, and, yeah, it kind of was just a real downer for me, like, I, I just, it was, I was watching it late at night, and then I went to bed thinking, like, okay, that was kind of a sad thing to end on, so, that, it does have that going for it, um, I really don't have much to say about this one, except I would check it out if you're a fan of this franchise. It's definitely not a bad movie. It's not great either. It's just like like an average horror flick to just throw on to have fun with. But as I said, it's got a dark ending, so you might not have too, too much fun. So for this one, I give it a solid 6 out of 10. Probably forgettable for me. Like, it's not one I would rewatch a lot, but you know, 6 out of 10, I do recommend checking it out if you're into movies like this. So, thank you guys once again for joining me for day 14, and I will surely see you for day 15.